It has been over 15 months since I had bought my love bracelet small size. All in all, this has been one of the best, ultimate best luxury purchases that I have ever made. And in this video, I'm going to give you my 15 month review. Yes, it has wear and tear. Yes, it's the smallest size. Resale value is probably really poor, but you shouldn't be buying it for those reasons anyway. You buy because it suits you. And this is a piece that is for life. This will be something that it will be on my arm for the rest of my life for as long as I can live. And so this is definitely super, super worth it. We're gonna talk about sizing. We're gonna talk about wear and tear. We're gonna talk about whether it's worth it, whether you should get the small size or the regular size. So if you're wondering if the thinnest size love bracelet is for you, especially if you're wondering about the 15 centimeter size, which is the one that I have, then keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amy, if you're brand new here, and today's video is kindly sponsored by Ana Luisa. For today's look, I'm wearing these beautiful Kylie earrings and this choker necklace. They are also gold plated, which is resistant to wear and tear. As for my little choker, I don't know if you can see as I rotate it, it is a beautiful, beautiful design. It has these little studs and also throughout it, there are these crystals. So as you move and talk, it will kind of also rotate around your neck. And I have right here on the smallest setting. So you can also adjust it to a much larger neck or you can also wear it a little bit lower. This one is a really pretty ring with crystals all around and I wanted a little index ring to stack with my existing wedding set. This one is in sterling silver and plated with rhodium. These ones are the simple hoops called the low, medium, and silver, and it is in 925 sterling silver plated with rhodium. Again, these are just really simple hoops, and I just wanted the silver version since I already own these in the gold plated. Right here we have the Alyssa hoops, and these are so, so edgy and really really pretty these have a few facets to them and as you can see the pointed angle design is really really cool again 925 sterling silver plated with gold their fine jewelry line which consists of mostly silver are all made of recycled silver so i love that they are a sustainable company and their pieces start as low as 39 dollars you can also use my coupon code fashionably amy 10 to save 10 percent at checkout and thank you again to Ana Luisa for sending me these beautiful pieces. Back to our love bracelet review. Mine is the love bracelet small model in the 15 centimeters in rose gold. They come in yellow gold and also white gold and also the ones with diamond encrusted in it. I just went with the most simple one and in rose gold. The yellow gold and the rose gold are exactly the same price and white gold is usually just a little bit more expensive. I've also tried the classic with with yellow gold and rose gold i believe and also when i was deciding between the sizes i also tried 15 centimeter and 16 centimeter and of course in the end i went with 15 centimeter and we will talk about sizing let's get the specs out of the way these are made of 18 karat gold and because mine is in the smallest size at 15 centimeter it is the one that weighs the least and also has the least amount of gold, unfortunately. Not really a big concern of mine because you should choose things that fit you, not just because there's more material. I weighed it with my scale, which is not completely accurate, but it's approximate. It comes out at 17 grams. So you're getting 17 grams of 18 karat gold. The width of the small size or thin size is 3.65 millimeter. I do keep this traveling pouch, which it was complimentary when I bought it, with uh, the screwdriver. So I always put my screwdriver inside this pouch so I know where it is because this is pretty small. You can lose it quite easily. The screwdriver color matches supposedly matches the color of your bracelet. But as you can see, there's quite a bit of discrepancy uh, between the two tones of rose gold. And I think it's because I've been wearing my bracelet for 15 months and I've been showering with it. I don't remove it at all, um, except for the first one, I kind of removed it here and there, but for the most part, I just don't even remove it. And so, it's just been sitting on my arm for this whole time. It's getting dirty, it's getting scratched up and everything. And even the color of 
the bracelet has shifted a little bit. I believe it was a little bit more rosy at first. So this is a pretty dramatic um, difference. And of course, this is not pure gold. This is probably just plated in rose gold if at all i'm not even sure for this one the width over here is five centimeter however if you count those two little nubs because that takes up a little bit of space then i measure it to be about 4.8 centimeters so you have about 4.8 centimeter width for the 15 centimeter size and then the height here is about 3.5 centimeter also, I wanted to mention for the opening, so to open this bracelet, you see where the screw is. So you pinch on the side with the screw and it will open quite easily so you don't have to like feel like you're forcing the bracelet. The opening right here is about 3.3 centimeter wide. So this might be a significant detail that you might want to keep in mind because some people's arms may be quite thick. Again, to open or to close, you just kind of pinch up and down like this a little bit so that this little um, kind of protruding part can go through that little hole in there and again it's going to be a little bit hard to see but once you push it then it goes in pretty easily why did i go with 15 centimeter versus 16 versus actually i wouldn't go <laughs> higher than 16. so it was either between 15 or 16. Uh, the rule of thumb on their website and even when you shop there is that you measure the size of your wrists and depending on that you can add up to one or two centimeter to choose your size so just for your reference my wrist up here at the smallest part is 13.5 centimeters however my wrist over here which is if you can see there's this mark and I even have like a bracelet tan actually because it's the summer I've been getting tanned. So this area right here, which is usually where my bracelet kind of gets uh, stuck, is 14 centimeter wide. So I have pretty small arms and wrists obviously because I have small arms, therefore my wrist is pretty small. That gives you a little bit of perspective as to the size of my arm and why I went with 15 because if you were to just measure the wrist size, 13.5 plus 2 is about 15.5 but plus 1 is 14.5 so 15 is right smack in the middle and even when I was trying this bracelet in store because I also tried the 16, the difference between the 15 and the 16 is that the 16 rotates super easily it will just rotate on its own while I'm just like moving my arm like this whereas the 15 which is the size that I have it doesn't rotate on its own I have to help it rotate so the 15 sits right here because it can't get past the flesh because you know your arms are not completely pancake like it's not a complete ovo it does have muscles and everything so this is the part that it stops for me and it just stays there and it's really comfortable uh, as i twist and turn my arm the bone inside doesn't get um stuck in any weird way it's the correct and the perfect size for me and also because it stays here it doesn't move around so much so even that also alone helps with the wear and tear the 16 when it was rotating on its own and sometimes it would get stuck sideways on a part of your bone and it doesn't readjust itself easily then it's really really uncomfortable trying it out in person is probably the best way to determine your size and also your cells associate can also help you decide she also told me that unless i gained over 60 or 50 pounds my wrist size will most likely be the same okay so why the thin version the small model versus the classic thicker model um i don't know if you notice it but on my arm which again is a pretty small arm it looks like a normal size bracelet it doesn't look too small it doesn't look like you can't see it and it still is a statement on my arm because of my thin arms 
uh, very small bone structure. And therefore, when I was trying on the regular size, the thicker version, it felt like it almost overwhelmed my arm and just my overall look, if that makes any sense. Whereas with this and any of the jewelry that I wear in addition to this, so usually my rings and this and whatever costume jewelry I may have that day, um, it just is such a cohesive look. So obviously this is a personal preference. I also really like this design, this opening and closing mechanism way more than the classic version. As you all know, the classic version is basically two pieces and then you have to screw both the top and the bottom of the bracelet in order to close it or open it. Most likely you'll also need someone to help you with that because it's quite hard to do it on yourself. Uh, depending on which arm you're wearing your bracelet as well. By the way, I'm wearing it on my dominant hand already, so this arm is already my bigger arm. And therefore, um, yeah, there was just no way that I would have gone with the 16 size because if I wanted to ever change to my left arm, which is even smaller, then yeah, it just wouldn't make any sense to go with the 16 size. Whereas for this version, which is the thin version, as you saw earlier, you just pinch it and it is secured by one screw only and the other side is the hinge area. So as you can see, that's the hinge area. So this bracelet will never break apart in two pieces, whereas the regular size, of course, is two pieces together and it would have a screw here and a screw here so this one you will never really lose your bracelet per se unless you unscrewed it on one side and you didn't notice it falling off which i've never had any issues of my bracelet falling off which is a very common issue with the classic size again i'm not sure if they fixed it or not it doesn't matter because i don't own that one all you need to do is just turn that screw to the same direction as all the other motif so all the other motifs are part of the design this is the symbol of the free-spirited love motif and as you see i'm rotating my bracelet as we speak which is why i said if i went any bigger then whenever it rotates right here on my arm it will get stuck sideways and it's just really really uncomfortable this way it wouldn't rotate on its own unless i do it in terms of designs and just uh overall all the very popular or well-known luxury bangles out there why did i choose cartier instead of hermes bulgari tiffany um there's a lot more i'm sure but those are the main big ones that i am aware of price wise this one is one of the more affordable version this one currently retails for 5600 canadian dollars before sales taxes and so when i bought it it was about a hundred dollars less so since 15 months ago they have had increased their price but pretty marginally it's really reasonable so far also um, even though you are getting a little less material versus the classic version um, but they didn't overcharge for the amount of material uh, to get the thinner version yes you're still paying a bit more per grams of gold for example uh, but at the end of the day, it's what suits you and what works for you best and also design-wise. Even if we were to look at one that is very, very similar pricing, which was um, the Tiffany T1 narrow bangle was also one of my choices. That one, I found that the curvature, like the fit of that one, even though they may be 15 centimeter size as well, that one feels a bit rounder and I feel like the oval shape of this um, bracelet is a, a lot more comfortable and just kind of conforms your arm a little bit better. I can tell you for sure that the appearance of the bracelet has slightly changed colors. I think it used to look a little bit more pink. Uh, not that it was very pink, but it was definitely a bit more pink and it has definitely turned more yellow. Um, but I actually really still like it because even though it's still uh, more yellow than its original state, it's not as yellow as the original yellow gold would have been. And so that is part of the wear and tear and I think that is actually a beautiful thing. For me, the rose gold suits my skin tone the best. I think for me, I have a lot of the cooler tone. I'm, a f I'm quite fair and I, I kind of have more of a cool tone. And I feel like the rose gold is right in between that 
you know, it has that golden sheen sometimes, but it's not so uh, in your face. It's not so yellow that it will like make it look kind of weird. I feel like people who have olive skin or maybe just even if you're fair, but just have that tan like or maybe just kind of like on the warmer tone, then yellow gold will suit you so, so very well. But for me, um, as you can see, all my jewelry are all in rose gold or platinum. As I said earlier, I've been wearing this bracelet for over a year, like almost 15 months non-stop. Only in the very first month where I was kind of babying it and kind of noticing that I have a brand new something on my arm that I'm like kind of a bit worried to put the first scratch in, um, which of course is a completely normal process because you're not used to it. And I uh, wasn't even sure that I would like having a bracelet on my arm 24 seven. Uh, but you do get used to it pretty fast, I will say. I think um, I think for me, it took maybe about two weeks to be completely used to it. And especially after your first bigger scratch, you just don't even care anymore. So right now, it's got a really beautiful patina. And I will just say this, even though it has a lot of very small uh, and some larger scratches, nothing too major of course but it does definitely have that patina and by patina i mean a lot of micro scratches and they all kind of blended in that is just from me doing everything uh everyday chores washing the dishes and sometimes it's just because you're moving you kind of just knock it around the walls whatever you're touching um at one point um even typing on your laptop and whatnot the table um at one point especially after the one month mark you're not gonna care anymore so that is when i started wearing my bracelet 24 7. i wouldn't even remove it for anything special which arguably is a great thing because yes it does get scratched up but you want your cosplay wear and this is as i said earlier my very best luxury purchase of all time i would redo it again and again and again even if the price increased by I don't know, 20, 30%, I think it's still worth it. Uh, but again, like I said earlier, their price increase so far has been so marginal and so reasonable. But anyway, from afar, I don't even know if you can see the wear and tear. Of course, I'm gonna put some B-rolls of close-ups, hopefully with different reflections, whether you can see any wear and tear. I am telling you there are a lot. Uh, okay, maybe at certain angles you can see some of the scratches, but really it kind of all blends in. And not only that, the reflection of the shine, I can see them for sure. I definitely see them, especially on the underside where I'm always knocking around my table when I type. You know they are there and you see them, but it really, it doesn't bother me. Um, they always say, it becomes part of the character of the piece, which is so true. Your own wear and tear, it's proof that you have been wearing your bracelet, which should make you really happy. And even then, it's still not terrible. It still looks like a really, really stunning piece. And it really did add to my whole experience. Like from now on, I never had to think about, oh, which costume jewelry piece I had to throw on my arm to kind of add to my look it's always there anyway uh, with rings sometimes i can forget right but because this is literally on my arm the only thing that is on my body 24 7 it really is such a wonderful wonderful investment and worth every single penny all in all is if you are constantly worried about wear and tear and that is the only thing stopping you from buying this i'm guessing unless you're very very picky and you you really cannot accept any sort of scratches on your jewelry, then I'm guessing fine jewelry is not for you to begin with because those are meant to be pieces to be worn. Uh, but you know, if you can get over that fear, then wear and tear should not even be that big of a deal, at least for this bracelet, because the wear and tear on this bracelet is so reasonable and it morphs into this beautiful piece that is only yours that you know, is part of you and it uh, it really doesn't even matter at the end of the day that it does get wear and tear because every single piece of jewelry, believe me, even though my rings, uh, maybe less with earrings, but like earrings, necklaces, maybe they're okay because you don't go around knocking on tables and stuff. But aside from that, anything that is on your arms, uh, they will get wear and tear no matter what. So 
you just gotta get over that fear and that should be okay so just to summarize what are the pros and cons of this and whether it's worth it for you so for me uh, a huge pro is that the thin version looks absolutely amazing on tiny arms so if you're similar to me and you have tiny little arms and tiny little wrists then this size the thinner size is absolutely stunning and already makes a statement on your tiny little arm <laughs> plus i love the fact that cartier does it in so many sizes so mine is in 15 but they go all the way up to 20 centimeter which is amazing so even if you do have a much larger wrist than me it will look amazing on you too it will still fit you and not only that it will become a great stacking piece for you i envy the people who can stack bracelets and look so cool i don't know if i love stacking on my arm i feel like one piece makes more of a statement than several pieces on me personally but i do feel that a lot of people that do buy the slim version because they want it as a stacking piece it's absolutely stunning this is a much more friendly uh piece budget wise because it starts off at 5600 now in canada but you know in comparison and if you really want to like just take every other luxury brand into perspective this is really an affordable more budget piece if you will i didn't talk about packaging but if you just watch my um original unboxing video then you can see all the packaging that i received and i also bought it during the pandemic so they were very limited with their packaging and what they were giving out i didn't even get the wrapping but in any case in general packaging with cartier pieces they're just absolutely absolutely top notch they not only had the original red boxes and well normally they would also wrap it in paper which i didn't get but if they have any stock you can also get their traveling pouches which are really really beautiful and it's made of velvet it has a few pockets inside so when i travel especially because i need to bring this screwdriver around if i ever need to remove it um, not only can i put this bracelet in here but i can also put my other jewelry pieces they also provided me with a complimentary cleaning kit Oh, by the way, I've never really cleaned my bracelet with their cleaning kit yet. I, like I said, I've just been wearing it. I've, I don't even care about wear and tear and cleaning it at all because it'll just get dirty again the next day. Uh, but it does come with uh, the complimentary cleaning kit as long as they have the stock. And so I feel like packaging wise, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And that alone was, you know, pushing me and giving me another reason to purchase this particular one. In terms of service, uh, as far as I remember them, what they told me is that you get complimentary cleaning at the store for life. And that is also a really, really huge point because if you went with Hermes, yes, I like Hermes, don't get me wrong, I love Hermes, but if you went with any Hermes fine jewelry, they don't have the aftercare service. Of course, they'll have it at Tiffany, um, will they even have it at Chanel? I'm not sure. Those are not companies that specialize in jewelry alone. They do fashion in general, like handbags and leather goods and, and clothing. So they are so uh, multiverse, but um, just because they also offer fine jewelry, it doesn't mean that they, ha they will be able to offer you the same aftercare, which Gartier will, of course, Tiffany will, of course, and that is also a huge point for me to go with this one. Last but not least, it's the fit and comfort. Like I said earlier, I really, really appreciate the locking mechanism of the thinner version. It's the easiest, most convenient. If you ever need to remove your bracelet on a more regular basis, it's totally possible to do it on this version. I don't know if you should do it that often anyway because even my sales associate was telling me at the time to turn the screw and opening and closing it like every day is actually not good for the mechanism itself just think of that as being the wear and tear itself as well like you are using that mechanism turning it all the time so in the end there is some micro wear and tear uh, just for that reason so uh, although you can remove this bracelet quite often by yourself and it's easy to do it I wouldn't totally recommend it. I've just gotten used to just wearing it. So 
just to warn you but but it's possible um, in terms of the fit like I said earlier it comes in a variety of sizes 15 to 20 centimeter which is very inclusive uh, 15 is pretty much the smallest size available that I know of uh, that will fit people like me with very very small bone because for the longest time and I've complained about that a long time ago I could never find any bracelets doesn't matter if it's high-end luxury high street it doesn't matter I could not find any bracelets that fit my particular arms they just never really look good on me and I'm really really happy that they've decided to expand their sizing range down to 15 centimeter I believe the JUC thin version comes down to 14 which matches this one because that one also fits slightly different so the 14 will go with this one and that is very inclusive and I really like that if you have even smaller wrists than me which I know is possible um, I still feel like the 15 will fit you quite well now the cons there are a few but not so many uh, one of the cons which I think it's the most um, thought of is that this bracelet or this whole line right the love bracelet is a very very common design that everybody owns um does that bother me no not even a bit i feel like at the end of the day you wear the item the item shouldn't wear you so as long as you style it well and it goes well with your aesthetic then that's all it counts um so yeah it wouldn't matter if it's really really common even if i went with the bulgari or the Almas for that matter I don't know that the uniqueness of those pieces or the less common of those pieces will actually make me think that it's a better piece in contrary because I feel like this actually looks best on me another con which is makes more of a real um, challenge sometimes is that you do have to carry your screwdriver around if you are thinking of removing or needing to remove your bracelet often so if you're traveling or if you I don't know for whatever reason you need to remove your bracelet um, then you do need that little screwdriver it doesn't necessarily have to be this but it does have to be a pretty small size one that fits the screws on this so that is an inconvenience a third con of the love bracelet is that um, apparently there's a lot of counterfeit out there so a lot of companies are I think because this piece is so popular and loved by many um, it makes it the more of a target to counterfeit now at the end of the day like I said you have to be comfortable with what you're wearing and as long as you know it's a genuine piece and as long as you you are wearing the piece not the pieces the pay the piece is not wearing you then it, it shouldn't matter that there's a lot of counterfeited pieces out there uh, it's the same with bags right there's a lot of counterfeited LV bags with the monogram print because it's so prevalent and so recognizable people like it they, they feel maybe a certain way of prestige associated with it when they're seen with the item I don't look at it that way myself personally for me is if the piece looks good on me and I can style it well and it goes well with my entire look that's what's more important not because the item is a luxury brand or a well-known brand or a popular item last but not least a very annoying con <laughs> for me anyway is that it doesn't matter which size you're buying whether it's 15 16 17 18 19 or 20 they're all the same price and that's not fair right I'm just gonna say it it's not fair because I'm buying the smallest ever size and I get the least material yes I get all the same design and everything and that's all great the same service same packaging but I get the least material so that's annoying but it again like I said earlier it doesn't matter because I need to go with what fits me if I went with the 16 or the 17 yeah they are bigger I get more material I get more gold but they will be uncomfortable they'll be flowing on my arm in a weird way and they wouldn't look like I'm wearing a really substantial piece that suits me and that gives me that statement that I want so yeah that is something to consider of course uh, especially if you're in between size I feel like if you can pull off either size then sometimes it may be a good reason to go up a size not because of the price but 
just because in the summertime or maybe you might have a lifestyle change maybe you'll get pregnant and you'll retain more water or in the summer when it's really really hot and you get more swollen and with the stickiness of your sweat um, having a size that is slightly more flexible will also be more comfortable so if you are in between size that is only if you're in between size then going that size up is maybe a good choice i'd be curious to know what's on your arm what's the arm candy on yours um, mine is only the one but i really 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 love it and i cherish it so much and this is absolutely like i said the ultimate ultimate best investment for me yes it has wear and tear yes it's the smallest size resale value is probably really poor but you shouldn't be buying it for those reasons anyway you buy because it suits you and this is a piece that is for life this will be something that it will be on my arm for the rest of my life for as long as i can live and so this is definitely super super worth it while you're at it maybe you can also recommend me another piece of fine jewelry that i should start looking at uh, because i'm always on the lookout now i'm kind of addicted to fine jewelry even though uh, i try not to go too crazy too fast but thank you so much for watching again don't forget to check out anna luisa thanks again have a great day and i'll talk to you guys again very soon bye